The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. May the words of the Gospel be in my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. Que la palabra de Dios penetre mi mente, esté siempre en mis labios, y entre y permanezca en mi corazón. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Del Evangelio de Mateo Jacob engendró a José, el esposo de María, de la cual nació Jesús, llamado Cristo. Cristo vino al mundo de la siguiente manera. Estando María su madre, desposada con José, y antes de que vivieran juntos, Sucedió que ella, por obra del Espíritu Santo, estaba esperando un hijo. José, su esposo, que era un hombre justo, no queriendo ponerla en, en, en evidencia, pensó dejarla en secreto. Mientras pensaba en estas cosas, un ángel del Señor le dijo en sueños, José, hijo de David, no dudes en recibir en tu casa a María, tu esposa, porque ella ha concebido por obra del Espíritu Santo. Dará a luz un hijo y tú le pondrás el nombre de Jesús, porque Él salvará a su pueblo de sus pecados. Cuando José despertó de aquel sueño, hizo lo que le había mandado el ángel del Señor. Palabra del Señor. Gloria a ti, Señor. Please be seated en ciencia todos. It's so wonderful to be here on this the feast day, the solemnity of Saint Joseph, the husband of Mary. Estamos celebrando nosotros la gran solemnidad de la fiesta de San José, el esposo de María. Y le quería agradecer yo de una manera especial a mi gran amigo eh, y paisanos, somos paisas nosotros, no sé si saben ustedes, no más que el, el Padre Michael viene eh, del norte 
yo soy, yo soy del sur, él es norteño, yo soy sureño. <laughs> We're both from the same country. I'm from the north of Pol uh, the south of Poland, and he's from the north of Poland. But uh, it's uh, an absolute joy to be here uh, during these three days when we hope to be renewed. Esperamos nosotros en estos días ser renovados. Son días de gran renovación espiritual. We all need some time in order to be renewed in our spiritual life. A lot of people ask me, Father, where is faith at? Where is my faith? Muchas personas me preguntan a mi padre, ¿dónde está ubicada la fe en la persona? Is faith in my mind? La fe está en mi mente? Is faith in my heart? Está en mi corazón? And I said, no. Faith is not in my mind, it is not in my heart. Faith is in my behind. La fe está en mi trasero. How is it? Because faith is all about showing up. Faith has to do with coming. La fe se trata de venir. Es una decisión. It's a decision. You have decided to come here tonight. Ustedes han decidido de venir aquí hoy. Huh? You may not feel like coming every week. You may not feel like being alive every day. You may not feel like being a husband or a father. But you do it because it's a decision. It's in showing up. No siempre sienten ustedes las ganas de ser madres o padres, de ser esposa o siempre les da ganas de ser esposa. No creo, ¿verdad? No hay tantos problemas en la vida, but you show up. Pero vienen. And that's what counts before the Lord, that you show up, that you're here. So first and foremost, I would like to congratulate all of you and to tell you uh, how proud I am of all of you and how proud Jesus is of all of you that you're here. Primeramente, Quería tomar la oportunidad ahorita de decirles lo orgulloso que yo soy de todos ustedes porque vienen. En medio de una pandemia están ustedes aquí. Y eso es lo que cuenta ante el Señor, que vinieron, que estén viniendo. Today we celebrate the solemnity of Saint Joseph. Joseph heard what David heard and what Abraham heard and what all of the prophets heard, what Mary heard. And this is something that each of us needs to hear. They are the very famous words that are present all over the Bible that were pronounced by St. John Paul II, the great Pope from where? From Poland. All good things come from Poland. When 
Pope St. John Paul II was elected Pope, he said these words that the angel told to Joseph, we heard today, that Mary hears, that David, the great king from whom we get our Savior, and that Abraham, our father in faith, heard, that Paul, the great apostle, heard, and they, they are the words that you need to hear today in the midst of a pandemic. Do not be afraid. Be not afraid. I live in a town where we get a lot more rain and it's closer to the coast. So the rains that come are accompanied with big storms. And I was visiting a family during one of the storms. And I looked at the little boy there. He, he's about six or seven years old. And he was playing as if nothing. And there's thunderstorms and lightning. And I asked him, I said, aren't you afraid there's a big storm outside? And he looks at me, the little boy looks at me and he says, I'm not afraid. And I said, why aren't you afraid? And he says, because my daddy is home. I'm not afraid, he says, because my daddy is home. And you? in your own life. Do you know that your daddy is home? Do you have a daddy? Who's your daddy? That's the question for all of us to ask. Is it some politician? Is the virus your daddy? Who's your daddy? You know, my daddy is Jesus. I have a daddy. God is my daddy. And when my daddy is home, and where is my home? At each and every Mass, we have come to Mass. We say, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. That means in my house, we receive our daddy. Jesus, the second person of the Holy Trinity, comes to us under our roof to make his dwelling place with us. God, Emmanuel, is with us. God has visited our people. Have you experienced that visit of God in your own life? You know, everybody's got a story in their life. I was uh, teaching the seven-year-olds who are getting ready for their first communion and I was telling the seven-year-olds that they have a daddy in heaven, that God is their daddy. And little Sophia, she's uh, seven years old. Everybody's got a story, you know. She's always wanted to know who her father is because her mother, and everybody's got a story, none of us is better than anybody else, okay? Her mother had a past, as everybody has. We, you know, all men have fallen short of the grace of God. The Bible says we have all sinned. We've all fallen short. And she, she couldn't tell her daughter, Sophia, who her father is because she said she didn't know. And Sophia wanted to know who her daddy is, and so her mother would always say, stop asking me the question, which is a natural question that everybody wants to know. Stop asking me the question, because I am both your mommy and your daddy. Stop trying to find out, she would tell her daughter, who your daddy is. I am both your mommy and your daddy. Well, that day after that 
catechism lesson, she went home and she looked at her mother and she says, You're not my daddy anymore. I have a daddy. Father Adam told us today. Father Adam told me that I have a daddy. God is my daddy. From the mouth of babes the truth shall flow, the Bible says. The little children will guide us. We all have a daddy, and when you have a daddy, when your daddy is home, you shouldn't be afraid. For what shall separate me from the love of Christ, the Bible tells us? Will trial separate me? What can separate me from the love of God? A disease? A pandemic? Will that separate me? The sword? Nothing. Not even death has the power to separate me from the love of God, which I have gotten to know through Christ Jesus. That's what we are here to celebrate tonight and during these days, that we are accompanied that we are not alone, that everything is going to be okay in our life because God is with us. Do you know how many times that phrase that I just repeated to you that we have read today, that phrase that Joseph heard, be not afraid, you know how many times that appears in the Bible? 365 times. Do you think God has a message for us? You might not believe me. If you don't believe me, Google it. 365 times. And then I did a search last year because we had a pretty interesting year last year, didn't we? You know, I did a search last year and I Googled it. And it's actually three, and last year was a leap year. That was a very unusual year, okay? And I Googled it, and it's actually 366 times. So I said, my seminary professors got it wrong. <laughs> you think God has a message for us? We live surrounded by so much fear. We're so afraid. We are Christians. Are you a Christian? You need to ask yourself, but that's a follower of Jesus. As Christians, we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. You know, the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7. I know that by heart. And you should also. We walk by faith, not by sight. Esta frase que nosotros escuchamos hoy, no tengas miedo, fue repetida en toda la Biblia, Abraham, nuestro padre en la fe, la escuchó. David la escuchó. Todos los apóstoles escucharon eso. María, la esposa de José. Y también hoy José la escuchó. Y Dios quiere que nosotros también en medio de una pandemia, en medio de tanto miedo y temor, escuchemos las mismas palabras y nos las grabemos. No tengas miedo. ¿Y por qué no deberías de tener miedo? Porque Dios está contigo. No estás solo. No estás caminando solo. Dios está contigo. Estaba yo visitando una familia y durante una tormenta y las tormentas ahí donde están, donde estoy yo, están mucho más fuertes que acá. 
porque estamos más pegados nosotros al océano. ¿Ok? Entonces, hay una tormenta y un niño de como siete años está portándose como, como nada. Entonces le pregunto a él, ¿y tú por qué? No, 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 ¿Que no tienes miedo de la tormenta? Y él me mira a mí y me dice, no tengo miedo. Y le dije, ¿y por qué no tienes miedo? Dice, es que mi papi está en la casa. Mi papá está en la casa. ¿Cómo puedo yo tener miedo? Antes de comulgar, ¿qué decimos nosotros? Señor, yo no soy digno de que tú entres, ¿dónde? ¿Dónde? En mi casa. Si Dios está en mi casa, en mi casa es mi corazón, mi, mi alma, mi vida. Lo he invitado y si Dios está conmigo, ¿quién puede estar en contra de mí? Nada ni nadie. ¿Sabes tú eso? Que todo va a estar bien. No hay nada imposible para Dios. Nosotros solamente estamos pasando por la pandemia. Pero ahí está la clave, pasando. We are walking through this. How many of you know Psalm 23? If you read the Bible, you would know. Si, si eh, leyeran la Biblia, supieran las grandes palabras del Salmo 23. ¿Qué dice? I walk, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you go with me. Aunque estoy caminando por cañadas oscuras, no temo nada porque tú vas conmigo. What is, what's the key there? I'm walking. We are walking through the pandemic. We are not stuck in the pandemic. Whatever problem we face in life, whatever sickness, whatever challenge, whatever suffering, we are walking through it. We are not stuck in it. Estamos caminando cualquier problema que ustedes estén pasando en sus vidas, cualquier sufrimiento. ¿Dónde está su fe de ustedes? Que solo estamos nosotros pasando, caminando. No estoy yo atorrado. No estoy metido, sin salida. Estoy caminando. Y si estoy caminando, eso quiere decir que se va a terminar. If I'm walking, that means there is an ending to it. David, I wanted to talk about David today. Because David is a great... Uh, how do I, uh, he's a great start to these three days of renewal for us. The first reading told us about the great King David. From him comes Jesus. It says it right here in the gospel reading as well. From the house of David, Joseph, son of David, And David, the great king of Israel, his family was ashamed of him. He had brothers. His, his father was so ashamed of him that he would hide him. He would hide him from other people in a barn with animals. And when Nathan the prophet comes to anoint David. His father Jesse, David's father Jesse, has, has David hidden away in a barn in the midst of sheep. And one by one, Jesse brings each of his sons before Nathan the prophet. And Nathan says, no, not this one, not this one, not this one. Do you have another one? And only then does Jesse 
David's father get him. Only then. And David, the one rejected by his family, is chosen by God. You may be rejected by everybody in this life. You may feel like you have nobody. And we are living in the midst of great depression, great suicide, people taking their lives, great loneliness. That is the real pandemic right now. People feeling unloved, unwanted. We are in the midst of what our current Pope calls the throwaway culture, where everybody is disposable. We throw away not just plates and cups, but we throw away people. It's a horrible pandemic where you feel like you don't have any dignity. You feel like you don't have someone in your life that wants you. That's how David felt. His own family didn't want him. Nobody wanted him. They were ashamed of him. But there was one who wanted him. The stone rejected by the builders, the Bible says, has become the cornerstone. You may be rejected by everyone, but there is one who wants you. And it's not Uncle Sam. <laughs> Jesus Christ. God wants you. And God loves you. And God is after you. Just as you are. The insignificant is the most significant to God. You are so special to God that God did not want to live without you. That's why He gave His Son, Jesus Christ, to come for you. You are so special to God that God did not want to live without you, so He died for you, to be with you. So loved are you. Did Joseph, today we're celebrating Joseph. Did Joseph pursue and go after God? Ask yourself that question. I'm asking a question right here. Did Joseph go after God? I'm asking a question for you to answer for yourself. These are rhetorical questions. You answer them for yourself. Was he after God? No! God was after him. God went after Joseph. Did Mary go after God? She was 12 years old. She was a woman. In, the, in that society, she had all the whammies against her. And she was on the way. She was pregnant. I mean, things happened, you know. In her life, God went after her because God wanted her. And David did. Did David go after God? I just told you. No! In like manner. Did Abraham go after God? Read the Bible, y'all. The prophets 
Paul, the twelve apostles. The Bible says, it's not you who have chosen me. It's I who have chosen you. God chose us as God chose all of these personalities. God chose you and God wants you because God loves you. Even though a mother can be capable of forgetting her own child, the Bible says, I will never forget you. The first chapter of the book of Jeremiah the prophet, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, I dedicated you, a prophet to the nations. I chose you. That's the God we celebrate. And this great solemnity of Joseph. And we celebrate this. And we all need a little picker-upper in our life. That's why we have these days of renewal. To start in our own life walking by faith and not by sight. David, del cual escuchamos nosotros en la primera lectura, era un niño, un adolescente rechazado por sus propios papás. Su papá no lo quería para nada, lo escondía en medio de los animales. Le tenían vergüenza su propia familia. Cuando venía gente a visitar a los papás y a los hermanos de David, el rey David, el gran rey David, de donde vino, de, de, de donde vino nuestro Señor Jesucristo, de ese, ese linaje. Y cuando... Nathaniel, el profeta, viene a ungir a David como el rey de Israel, el gran rey. Su papá lo tenía escondido y le traía a todos los otros hermanos del rey David porque no, no pensaba que Dios pudiese haber escogido a este muchacho rechazado. Pero Dios no ve como ven los hombres y Dios escogió a David porque aunque todos en el mundo te podrán rechazar hasta tu propia familia, Dios no los rechaza. Dios nos acepta. Tanto te ama Dios a ti que dio su vida a ti porque no quiso vivir sin ti. Así es el amor de Dios. Vivimos nosotros en medio de tanta soledad, de tanta depresión. Yo he enterado muchos muchachos ahorita que se están suicidando, tomando su propia vida. Es una de las causas principales de la muerte en este país. Las personas muriéndose del suicidio porque no sienten el sentido de su vida no quieren vivir no sienten ganas de vivir esa es la verdadera pandemia las medicinas más recetadas son para la depresión y para la ansiedad no nos sentimos amados y aunque todos en el mundo nos podrán rechazar pisotear Dios no ve como ven los hombres. Dios nos acepta a todos tal y como somos. Dios nos ama. Dios te ama a ti tal y como eres. Y te quiere. Y quiere que reconozcas lo amado que eres. La dignidad que tienes. God wants you just the way you are. And God loves you just the way you are. That is the principal message. 
that we all need to hear in our life to get it into our heads that life is beautiful when life is lived with God. During these days, and I hope that you will take the time to come and also invite some of your friends and others that may not have come today to come back tomorrow in the morning in English and in the afternoon in Spanish. Eh, espero que ustedes inviten a más de sus amigos y familiares que vengan mañana, en la mañana, mañana, en inglés y en la tarde en español, con una misa de sanación mañana donde voy a estar haciendo oraciones fuertes de oración y liberación para todos los que vengan mañana. Ocupan todos ustedes porque están tan agobiados en estos momentos. Escuchar la buena noticia de lo amado que son All the funerals that I have had to celebrate during these days of so many people taking their own life. Tantos funerales de tantas personas tomando su vida. Me duele mucho mi corazón. Este retiro, estos días son para que ustedes descubran el gran sentido de su propia dignidad y valor como seres humanos. So this is the principal, principal message for us to hear during these days, how loved we are. And of course, I'm going to have some great stories that I have prepared. I have worked very hard to prepare this retreat. So if I have worked very hard, the least you can do is show up. And invite your family and friends. I know some people prefer Judge Judy. Let me tell you, I'll be more entertaining than Judge Judy. <laughs> si yo he podido preparar, fregarme en preparar estos días de este retiro, ustedes lo único que pueden hacer es venir y aplastarse y escuchar, e invitar sus familiares. Tengo unos chistes bien buenos <laughs> preparados, unas historias bien impactantes. Todo eso, no, no puedo decirles todo ahorita. I can't tell them everything right now, of course, because, you know, no, eh, yo sé que ustedes ya se quieren ir a la casa, que ya les duelen las pompas. ¿Verdad? No. Y ya los veo, uh, ya se quieren ir a la casa, yo sé por qué, porque eh, no está eh, el caso cerrado esperándonos. Uh, I know you want to get home for the wheel of fortune. <laughs> But I do hope that uh, you will come back and that you will spread the word. And I just tried to give you a little taste this evening of what I have prepared. It's uh, tougher for me to talk in two languages. That's why tomorrow, the morning will be in English and the afternoon all in Spanish because I get really into it. And when I really get into it, it's hard for me to change languages because I, I really get into it. So, 
ilyen szóval no, mañana va a ser todo en la tarde en español porque cuando hablo en los dos idiomas se me va el rollo muchas veces entonces en la tarde eh, va a ser todo en español uh, y en español pongo más chile ok entonces uh, eh, <laughs> la vida es más mejor siempre con chile no so, Those of you who want to come back in the afternoon also, uh, everything tomorrow is going to include a little bit of salsa, okay? A little bit of spice to, uh, to keep you all awake. Uh, let me uh, end. Um, let me end by telling you that uh, recently I had to give a talk at a dinner. And it's always interesting because when I talk during a dinner, and this was for one of the fundraisers of, of the diocese, and I had to give this talk, and of course they the, they wanted me to give a good talk so that the, because the people had were going to give during the thing, so you know that's always a, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah. And during the talk, the master of ceremonies, everybody's eating and everything, and he comes up to me and he says, Father, you know, should I introduce you now? Do you want me to introduce you now? Or should we let the people enjoy themselves a little while longer? 